Now we have a new chapter, trusses, uh, that we are going to do today. What is a truss? Truss is a stationary uh, members or beams, they form a truss where they are joined together and there is a load sharing process. Now, we will understand it uh, much better here. Suppose we have, you know, there is a point A and point B and we want to construct a bridge over it. We can directly, you know, use a single plank here and we can support it with, you know, this rectangular kind of a structure. But in this case, the forces of this entire load is acting only at two points. So, you know, the stability or the durability of this bridge is under question mark. A very big question mark. In this case, this entire uh, bridge is made in small, small, uh, you know, using small, small members we have made this bridge. Suppose this is an intermediate point, say O, then there is P, Q. We can have, uh, you know, to strengthen the bridge even more, we can have some more members in there. There's load sharing here. So, you know, the pressure points are more at ease, and this bridge will have much better performance than this. And this is just an example of a bridge, you know, uh, for any place where we have to construct or we have to build anything where load is an important factor, load can collapse the entire uh, construction that we have done. We use trusses to balance out these things. Uh, but there are some assumptions here, we will look at it one by one. For our uh, mechanics, we have to, uh, you know, take each of these members as weightless. They don't have any weight. I mean, they do have weight. They are, you know, iron or steel uh, bars. But for our consideration, we'll not. We'll take them as weightless. The next point is these members are joined. So, you know, using a pin. So these joints are pin joints. The next thing is any external force that is acting on it. You know, let it be wind or if there is a vehicle going through this. The force ex uh, you know, exerted by any of these external factors is always acting at the joint. So the joint is, in our calculation also the joint will play a very important role. We will do all the cal uh, calculations related to our joints. Now comes the main part that is how to solve sums or trusses. There are two methods. The first one is method of joints. So in this method what we do as we discussed that all the force is supposed to be concentrated or exerted only on joints. We take one joint at a time. Suppose for ex example we take this system joint A. We begin with joint A. At joint A, we will see what are the forces acting at joint A. They, this is a member which will have some force, this will have some force, this will have some force. So we also, you know, uh, each member, suppose this is a member in a truss, it can have only two kinds of forces. either in outward going directions, so that is tensile, uh, you know, it is under uh, tensile stress or in incoming direction that is compressibility. So these are the two types of, uh, you know, 
forces that our member will experience and this will be joined at a, it will be connected at a joint and at the joint depending upon whether it is an inward or outward force we will draw the resultant forces and we will solve the sum so this is the method of joints for this method what we do for we go from one joint we take suppose joint a we will find summation fx summation at y summation at summation of moments at point a so using and these all are equated to zero because we take that this entire structure is under equilibrium so this is the first method that is the method of joint the next one is which is the more uh, convenient one because the method of joints can be very lengthy the other method is method of section in our university questions we will be asked to find you know force or the weight or load on suppose this member only about this member so what we do is we draw the entire structure suppose we draw a structure here suppose this is how our structure is and we want to find the force f of this member what we do is we take a section we assume that we have cut this entire structure into two parts and we take only that part which is you know asked in the exam so when we cut this we get here a force a force in this direction and a force in this direction so this is what we are left with again we apply summation fx summation as y and moment about any point here equate it to zero because equilibrium condition is maintained and we can directly uh, get the required member but while uh, you know uh, while cutting or while in this section we need to keep in mind you know uh, that we don't huh, a very important point is we cut only through the members and not through the joint we cannot cut it like uh, like this exactly at this joint no this this is not allowed we need to cut only the members and conventionally we just cut three members so uh, in this case also we took section here so we got these are the three members which, which are cut and we get this uh, this system in equilibrium and we apply our conditions and we can solve this one. Okay, now the next topic that we will study is the types of trusses. A perfect truss, an under rigid truss or an over rigid. So we will first see a very simple diagram. Here, suppose this is A and B, we have one, two and three members here and we have three joints as well. This is J1, this is J2 and this is J3. Now, to calculate whether a system is, you know, under rigid and, or over rigid or it is a perfectly balanced rigid truss, we have a formula if m is equal to twice the number of joints minus 3 for one hinge and one roller uh, kind of a system and if there are two hinges then m is equal to or the number of members m is the number of members so number of members is equal to twice the number of joints minus 4 in this case, if you assume uh, this to be a hinge joint and this to be a, a roller joint, the number of members is 3. So we have our left hand side sorted. For the right hand side, 
we have one, two, and three joints minus like into two minus three, which is by formula. So we get six minus three equals to three. So this system is a perfectly rigid truss. Suppose we add another joint and two members to it. Now we will again uh, you know, apply the same formula. Now how many members do we have? We had three, we have added four and fifth. So we have five members here. Now we will look at the number of joints that we have. We have one, two, three and four. So we apply the formula four into two minus three. What is it? Eight minus three which is equal to five. So again our system is perfectly rigid. So this and if the system is perfectly rigid, it is more stable. It is likely to be stable. Suppose there is a case when the number of members is less than 2j minus 3 for one hinge one roller or less than 2j minus 4 for two hinges, then the system is under rigid. For an under rigid system, the condition of stability is not obtained because this is not a stable system. So these systems are uh, not in our syllabus or for our cons consideration. The next part is the over rigid system. Now again consider this system only. We had five members and five joints already so it was a perfectly rigid system. Suppose it, it is a part of a bridge and suddenly the load on the bridge increases due to some uh, external effect. What we can do is, as engineers, we can add another member here. So now we have the sixth one also. We have six here and this is again maintained to be at five. So our bridge is over rigid now. But for an over rigid bridge, the laws of presses as we discussed, the consideration, the assumption, assumptions are not applicable. In our university question paper, we will never encounter any of this or this uh, cases. We will always get a perfectly rigid truss. But uh, for our understanding, we, un we take these questions, we, these uh, equations, these formulas also. They can be a question whether where they will give you a truss and they will ask whether it is a perfectly rigid truss and, or a under rigid or a over rigid truss. So for those things, for those questions, these formulas will help us to find uh, the solution.